There are two big events that happen in October every year that are both scary and exciting. And of course, I'm talking about Halloween and I'm talking about the release of a new version of Ubuntu. Ubuntu typically releases a new version every six months in April and October of every year. And the October releases are always interim releases. They're not long term support releases, which means they can be kind of interesting. So today what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a look at the recently released Ubuntu 2110, their flagship edition with the GNOME desktop environment codenamed Impish Indri. So let's talk about the name first, Impish Indri. What does that mean? Uh, well, Impish means acting like an imp. For those of you that have not familiar with what that term is. It's a mythological creature, and Yump is kind of a, a demon or a troll, a, a mischievous creature, a devilish creature. So when somebody says you're impish, you're acting like an imp, basically. You're, you're being devilish. Um, injury, I had to look this word up. I had to go to Wikipedia and find out what the hell an injury is. I've never heard of it. Apparently, it is a lemur that lives in Madagascar. So impish injury is a devilish lemur. Interesting name. So let me switch over to my uh, virtual machine here. So I just spun up a virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and run through an installation of 2110. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the first option from the grub menu here. All right, and our live environment has loaded, and you have two options. Try Ubuntu, meaning this closes, and you can just try out the live environment itself, or you can go ahead and run through a proper installation. I'm going to go ahead and install Ubuntu, and the first thing is choose the language. By default, it's set to English US. That is correct for me, so all I need to do is click Continue. And then do we want to do a normal installation or do we want to do the minimal installation? The minimal installation will just not have quite as many things installed. So the normal installation gives you web browser, office suite, a few games, some media players. The minimal installation is going to give you the web browser because that's very important. But a lot of the other stuff, the office suite, media players and all of that, it's not going to give you those. You'll install the ones you want if you want those. I'm going to do the normal installation. Other options, download updates while installing Ubuntu. I will go ahead and do that install third-party uh software for graphics, Wi-Fi, additional media. So what this is, this is your third-party drivers, so your proprietary drivers for your graphics card, if you're an NVIDIA user, for example, or your Wi-Fi drivers, if you're doing this on a laptop. Many Wi-Fi chips only have proprietary drivers. And then a multimedia codecs, many of those are proprietary software as well. What this will do will get you those proprietary drivers and codecs that you need to actually have a proper desktop experience. So click that on and then click Continue. And then the installation type, erase disk and install Ubuntu. This is the default. It's just going to erase the entire drive and give the entire drive to Ubuntu. Something else, if you choose that, then that is manually partitioning the drive. Uh, for me, I'm just going to do erase disk and install Ubuntu. There is an advanced features button here. Let me click on that. And this is what you can do if you want to set up LVM or if you want to, instead of using the default Extend 4 file system, if you want to switch over to using ZFS. I will go ahead and tick on Erase Disk and Use ZFS just to verify that this actually works correctly. And then I'm going to click Install Now. And now it's warning us that it's going to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click Continue. And now we get to our time zone and it is correctly chosen that I am in the central time zone in the US. I'm just going to click Continue. And now we need to create our username. I'm going to call my user DT, uh, the computer name. This is the computer's host name. I'm going to call this Ubuntu-Vert. And then we need to choose a strong and complicated password for my DT user. We want to make sure that that's a good password for privacy reasons. And then do we want to log in automatically? I don't because I like having to enter a password to get into my computers, again, for privacy reasons. Uh, so I want to require my password to log in. And we also have a, a box here, Use Active Directory. That's ticked off by default. I'll leave that ticked off. I'm going to click Continue. And now the installation will actually continue for a few minutes. This portion of the installation typically takes about five or 10 minutes. You will get a slideshow that plays while it installs. You can actually cycle through the slides if you want to read a little bit about 2110 here. I'm going to pause the video and once this portion of the installation has completed, I'll be back. And the installation completed, that took about 10 minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and click restart now. And if you were doing this on a physical machine, you should unplug the USB stick that you were installing from. It, it should prompt you, yeah, please remove the installation media and then press enter. And it's rebooting just fine. 
Ah, we don't get a grub menu at all. It bypasses grub, which is fine. Well, we could force it to show us a grub menu if we needed it, but it just boots directly into our login manager where we have to enter our password. All right, and we're logged into GNOME. By the way, this is GNOME 40, so uh, they're still on GNOME version 40 here. The first thing I want to do before I get started doing anything else is change the uh, display resolution. So I'm going to search for display, and then I'm going to go down to uh, I'll close that message. Uh, go down to resolutions 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to click apply, and then I'm going to tell it to keep the changes. All right. And now I'll close that out, and here is the welcome uh, screen that we were greeted with, and this is where you can go ahead and connect any online accounts that you want to go ahead and connect, such as Ubuntu Single Sign-On, your Google accounts, Nextcloud, or Microsoft. I don't have any of these accounts except for a Nextcloud account. I'm not going to connect that here uh, on camera. And then next, do we want to uh, be a part of the uh, telemetry here? So do we want to send crash reports back to canonical. Typically, I don't mind leaving this uh, turned on to yes, so that would be fine for me, so I'll leave that on. I'm just happy they ask. I mean, if you want to choose no, you don't want to send them in any information, that's fine too, but if, if uh, these distributions ask to, uh, to send crash reports or bug reports, I don't mind doing that for them. And then privacy, do we want to uh, turn on location services? I probably don't. I'm good with leaving all of that off. Then it says you're ready to go. You can use software to install apps like these, uh, such as VS Code, Zoom, Spotify, Slack, a whole bunch of other stuff. Discord is here. OBS, uh, Zero AD, and it says open software now. I'm assuming this would just open the GNOME Software Center here. And that is taking a long time to open. The GNOME Software Center is probably packaged as a snap, I'm assuming, because that took a long time to load up there. It's also taking a long time to sync the repositories. That's not unusual. The very first time you open something, especially after a fresh installation, uh, these things can take a while. Sometimes the very first boot up after an installation takes a little longer, but after that, typically things settle down a bit. But it is taking a long time to sync the repositories here for this uh, GNOME Software Center. This is one of the reasons why I typically don't use these kinds of applications. I, I, I never use these applications to install and remove software or update my system. You guys always see me bring up a terminal. That's why. I would have already been done <laughs> at the terminal before this thing ever loads. But, you know, for purposes of this video, you guys probably want to see what the software center looks like. And I want to see. And, and, you know, it looks good. Now, I mean, the GNOME Software Center doesn't look bad. Looks very easy. You got your editor picks. You got some recent releases. And, of course, you've got categories to search through. For example, if you wanted to search for some games, you know, I could click on the games category. And is it even loading? It doesn't look like yeah, you know, it doesn't look like anything happened there. Are these categories just empty? Yeah, finance is empty. Let's do music and audio. Uh yeah, something's going on here. Probably since we just installed uh, Ubuntu 21.0.10, I am getting prompted that there's updates available. Let me go ahead and do a update all. Let's update all the packages that have updates available. It looks like right now the only thing that needs updating is SnapD, which is the uh, Snap daemon. But there's several Snap packages installed by default in Ubuntu, so we should go ahead and update the core Snap. And I've been staring at this screen for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and the core Snap package here probably should only take... A few seconds at most to install, I would think. It still says it's installing. I could cancel it, but you know what? I'm just going to uh, pause the video and see if this thing ever completes updating. All right, and that package, the core SnapD package, did actually finish updating. It took uh, two, three minutes. And now let's go back to this installed packages, explore packages, um, updates. It says application updates. I still have a button here. It's update all. It says unable to install updates. Snap has no updates available. So is this all snaps in the software center? Why is it telling me that there's no snaps available? You know what? I'm just going to close this out. The The software center, uh, I don't know what's going on with it. It'll probably sort itself out, you know, after uh, we could probably help it sort things out by doing control alt T and opening a terminal. 
And this is why I do everything in the terminal instead of doing those graphical software centers. I just do sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. That's your command line on Debian and Ubuntu based distributions to update the or sync the repositories and then upgrade all the uh, packages that have updates available. And this way, you know, it tells us exactly what's going on here. There's only one package to update. But if there were errors here, you would actually get a proper error message, you know, in the terminal and that completed just fine. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with the software center. Let's reopen it and art and design. No, still nothing here. Yeah, I don't know. This is, this is practically useless. So, uh, yeah, this is very off-putting. Uh, again, I wouldn't use this. I wouldn't use GNOME. <laughs> anyway, I wouldn't use a GNOME software center. I'm not that kind of user. But the people that would use this, you know, new to Linux users especially, they're going to be put off immediately that that software center is uh, completely broken. Uh, and I still got the welcome screen here. Maybe I want to install one of these programs. Maybe I want to install GIMP. If I click on it, it does open the GIMP page inside the software center and I get the install button. And let's see if I can click on it and does anything happen? Well, I clicked on it and it didn't look like anything happened. I'll click on it again. Okay. Unable to install GNU image manipulation program status code 409 kind equals snap. I was trying to install GIMP as a snap and it failed. Yeah, okay. Why are you installing GIMP as a snap? It's available as a, as a dip pack. Again, why, why don't we just open a terminal? And this is what I, I preach to you guys all the time. sudo apt install GIMP. Watch this. This is why people think that the terminal and the command line is so much harder, so much difficult. But guess what? I just got GIMP installed. Where anybody that was stuck in that graphical software center... They're wondering what the hell those error messages are. They're going to the internet and they're going to spend hours reading um, forum posts on Ask Ubuntu about what that error is. I, I'm just, I'm just not going to deal with that. I'm just going to go to the command line where things typically just work. So let me close out our little welcome screen here and let's go ahead and on the sidebar here we do have Firefox as our default browser. Let me launch Firefox. Firefox takes a second to load, but that's normal for Firefox, especially the very first time. But I don't know. This is the very first time. I mean, Ubuntu 21.10 was just released, like just a couple of hours ago. So there may still be some bugs in it. Um, it still may be kind of more of a beta <laughs> rather than an official release, even though it is an official release. But still, the very first time you open Firefox, at least for me, I get tab crash reporter. So it's complaining about a crash on the very first time I open Firefox. So that's not good either. So let me go to help about Firefox. What version of Firefox are we running? Uh, 93.0, uh, of course, 64-bit version of Firefox. Let me, you know, once again, I hate to keep opening a terminal because I know a lot of you guys, some, you know, new to Linux users, a lot of you long time Ubuntu users probably don't use the uh, terminal that often. But, you know, we're getting all these errors and th things aren't working right. And I'm just curious. Snap uh, list. And let me zoom out so we can actually read that because I'm zoomed in so far here. And there is a list of all the snaps that are installed on the system. And that's kind of what I was afraid of. Firefox is installed as a snap. Uh, GIMP is installed as a snap too, but uh, I didn't finish the installation of GIMP earlier. It complained that the GIMP installation crapped out on us. But I have two different versions of GIMP. So I guess it did, even though I got the error message saying that it failed, it did install GIMP as a snap. It also installed GIMP as a dev package from the apt repositories. I wonder if both of them actually launch. It says GNU image manipulation program is ready. Then where's it at? Okay, there it is. I guess it launched it, but for some reason it launched it behind the terminal window. I wonder if the second GIMP would also launch. And we wait. 
One of them is a snap pack, and I'm assuming it's the second one. <laughs> it took a long time for that thing to open. Oh my goodness. One other thing to note here is snap-store. That's the snap store. If I ran that package here, you'll see what that is. You see, that is what I thought was the GNOME Software Center. It is the GNOME Software Center, but it's been modified. And it, yeah, it's trying to show us snaps instead of, you know, dip packages. I guess that's why that software center is so bare and practically empty. But but it's still weird because snap packages, if you go to Snapcraft, the uh, snap store, there are actually a lot of snap packages out there. These categories should not be empty. There's a million uh, music and audio snaps out there. And now they load. <laughs> okay. I, I knew it would eventually sort itself out. I, I, I don't know. Probably... Uh, Maybe running the snap list command or running some other snap commands. I, I don't know. But something eventually sorted it out to where it synced uh, the snap store. And now it's actually showing us what is available here. I'm going to close that out. Now, I, I really don't want Firefox or GIMP as a snap if they're available in the repository. So I'm going to do a sudo snap. Uh, is it uninstall or is it remove? I can't remember if snap is the same as apt. I think it's removed. sudo snap remove uh, Firefox. Yep, that looks like that works. All right, and it says Firefox remove. Now I'm going to sudo snap remove GIMP because I've got GIMP installed from the standard repositories and GIMP installed as a snap. So let's get rid of the, uh, the second GIMP, which is the snap. Now, I will not have a browser since I, the only browser was Firefox installed as a snap. So now let's go ahead and sudo apt install Firefox. Let's install the correct Firefox from the Ubuntu repositories here. All right, and Firefox finished installing. I'm going to go into show applications. I'm going to search for Firefox and I'm going to see if I can drag an icon back here because it was removed when we... Uh, uninstalled it. Now let's launch Firefox and see if we get any more annoying crashes. No, you see the standard Firefox from the repos <laughs> is working. So yeah, so that's the one I would definitely go with about Firefox 93.0. Yeah. So uh, we got rid of the, the annoying snap version of Firefox. And if I hit the super key to get back into the uh, show applications thing, uh, well, I guess I'll just do it with my mouse here. Uh, do I have two versions of GIMP installed? No, I just have one now, so that's good. So I think we solved the snap problem. And now if I do snap list, yeah, you know, the only snaps that are really here are like the core snaps and the snap store itself, and that's fine. Let me go ahead and clear the screen here. I'm going to do a uname dash r. What kernel version are we on? We're on 5.13. And if I did a... Uh, apt list dash dash installed. Let's see how many packages are actually installed from the repositories. Of course, it spits every package that's installed out on its own line. So we could take that and pass that into the word count program. So pipe that into WC and then give WC the dash L flag for line count. And it'll tell us that in that output there were 1,734 lines, so that's how many packages were installed from the apt repositories. 1,734. Now there are two programs I check with every new release of Ubuntu to see if they're installed, because I think they should just be automatically installed on every single Linux distribution on the planet. Vim should actually be installed, but it's not. <laughs> HTOP should be installed. It's not. Uh, there's one other program that's never installed by default in Ubuntu, and I always have to install it. Uh, and now, I know not everybody has to use Git, but I do think Git probably should be installed by default. So there's a lot of really basic programs. I mean, for a, a distribution that, you know, installs quite a bit of software, but yet it misses a lot of what I consider really fundamental programs that should be there. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the programs that are installed by default. So if I get back into the uh, menu system here, uh, we have our additional drivers program. So if you clicked on this, this would install your uh, proprietary drivers for your NVIDIA graphics card, for example, or your proprietary Wi-Fi drivers for your uh, Wi-Fi chip in your laptop. So this is, you know, you uh, it will scan for any uh, drivers that are available. Of course, in this VM, there's no proprietary drivers available for me, but you'll get uh, a list of things that you could install and then just 
hit apply changes or whatever and it, it'll just install them. It's a great little tool, very easy to get that stuff installed and working correctly in Ubuntu. You have uh, All Right Solitaire, so a solitaire game, uh, GNOME Calendar, language support, uh, the LibreOffice suite. So we've got Calc. Is that the only uh, LibreOffice program? No, I'm pretty sure it installed Writer. Yeah, it did. So, but why was Calc the only one that had a icon? <laughs> That's kind of weird too. About LibreOffice, what version are we on? We're on 7.2.1.2. And let me get back into the menu because yeah, we have the the main uh, page of LibreOffice where you can open you know your Writer programs or your Impress documents or whatever. But Calc has its own separate icon. That's kind of weird. Uh, videos, that's GNOME videos, text editor, that's just gedit, GNOME's plain text editor. Really nice little text editor, I, I quite like gedit. Uh, we have settings, which is just the GNOME settings manager where you can change things like the screen resolution, which we did earlier, or, you know, change your power settings, keyboard settings, and things like that. You can think of it as like a, a control center. I get back into the menu system. We have a utilities category where you'll find things like your system monitor. Since we didn't install HTOP, I guess we could take a look at the system monitor. Actually, I uh, minimized it. I'm trying to find space <laughs> to make it uh, maximize. And the problem is, you know, with this, this bar has so much crap in it. And this is not Ubuntu's problem. This is GNOME's problem. I don't know what GNOME's doing these days. There's so much stuff in this bar. You can barely, you can barely grab the bar to resize it or move it. You can barely find an empty spot to double click it to maximize it. And that's just weird. Like GNOME is, GNOME has practically destroyed itself. Uh, <laughs> we may come back to that later, but uh, let's actually check system resource usages with HTOP. I'm just going to go ahead and install HTOP. Because this will be much easier, uh, much cleaner to read as well. And now HTOP is installed. Let's run it and let's see. Wow. <laughs> we are using almost 1.5 gigs of the 6 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. That's absolutely insane. That is insane. We haven't done anything. We're not running anything. The only thing that's running... Uh, the SnapD daemon is running. You know, we opened some of those snap packs as well earlier... Uh, maybe some of that is causing a spike. And of course, GNOME, even just vanilla GNOME on most distributions does typically push about a gig of RAM on cold boot. 1.5 gigs, so is, is way over the top. That's just crazy. That I mean, that is insane. Because think about that. Um, many desktop environments and window managers these days use a few hundred megs. Uh, you know, many of them get down, you know, under... 400 megs of RAM, and this thing's using 1.5 gigs. That means it's using more than a gig of RAM than many other desktop environments would use. That's one gig of RAM that's not available for you to actually use doing work, like video editing or web browser, browsing, gaming, whatever it is that's sucking up a lot of your RAM. You can't use it for those applications because the GNOME desktop environment is using that RAM. And th that's uh, unacceptable in my book. Now, there's something really weird with this menu system, because I know we've got more programs than this installed. It's only showing us like a dozen programs. Uh, I see we've got two screens here. Ah, okay, so there's the rest of the programs. But why Why is this screen got just a few programs? I mean, it's not, it, it didn't even fill the whole screen. You would think this is all that's here, because you would think it would have at least three lines, and they would go all the way to the end over here, but they don't. Why is it split up like this? Again, this is probably not Ubuntu's problem. This is GNOME 40 here. Uh, again, the GNOME desktop environment, again, I, I think it's basically, over the last few years, they've made a whole bunch of questionable de decisions that, in my opinion, have kind of made them obsolete as a, a desktop environment that people actually are interested in or want to use. And I really think it's one of the problems that Ubuntu faces these days. And I, I've complained about it. For about a year, maybe two years, I, I started, you know, kind of putting it out there that Ubuntu, Ubuntu is waning in popularity. Ubuntu is not what it once was, because at one time Ubuntu was 
overwhelmingly the most popular Linux distribution on the desktop by far. It probably had more installations than all other Linux distributions combined. That's how popular Ubuntu once was. These days, nobody's excited about it. I actually didn't know Ubuntu was having a release today. <laughs> when I got to the office today, I actually didn't know today was like the date of an Ubuntu release. I just saw it, you know, in, in my uh, news reports here. Yeah, I was checking, you know, some of the Linux news and I was like, oh, Ubuntu had a release. I forgot about Ubuntu. You know, because these days it's not exciting. Nobody talks about it. Nobody really cares anymore. And, and that's sad because I was an Ubuntu user it, in the early days. Ubuntu was what got me into the Linux desktop. And it was so much more exciting back then. You know, the new releases of Ubuntu, they had uh, release parties and it was a celebration. And the problem is Ubuntu is stuck in the past. They're still holding on to GNOME. And they, they need to ditch GNOME. GNOME is holding Ubuntu back in a major way. GNOME is killing itself, and anybody attaching this itself to GNOME is going to die with it. That's just the case. G GNOME has destroyed their desktop environment. They've neutered their file manager. They, they've done so much, so many questionable decisions. And uh, obviously, GNOME is very politically activist in nature as well. You know, they're out there fighting these fights that have nothing to do with software. And Canonical as a company really should distance themselves from GNOME. Another thing about, you know, you, you're holding on to the past is if I switch back to the desktop here. You know, they're using Firefox as the default web browser. Most Linux distributions use Firefox as their default web browser, but Firefox is collapsing right now. Firefox is hemorrhaging <laughs> as far as money and user base. Uh, they are losing market share by the tens of millions every year to the point where Firefox probably will not be around in five years. And I strongly suggest Ubuntu and all these other Linux distributions to start exploring other options as far as your default web browser, because Firefox is kind of garbage these days. Uh, again, the company is garbage. The, the CEO that runs it is garbage. And, you know, Brave. There's an open source browser that was started by the former CEO of Mozilla. He left Mozilla to start Brave, and it's fantastic. And it's got the same kind of energy as what the old Firefox had back when Firefox was actually popular, where now, you know, don't hold on to this, these dying uh, projects like GNOME and Firefox. And I think if Canonical continues to do that, Ubuntu is going to join that group as well as, you know, part of these uh, once very popular software projects, free and open source software projects that just kind of fade away. Now, of course, I got off on a, on a rant there, <laughs> but man, this this is probably the worst release of Ubuntu I think I've ever taken a look at, uh, at least in the last 10 years. Now, if you go back and when they switched from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3 or to the Unity desktop back in, a, what, Ubuntu 11.04, that thing was horrible. But at least in the last 10 years, this is one of the least uh, pleasant experiences I've ever had. I mean, the software center didn't work and they're installing all these snap packages that are either crashing or they're just slow to load. Let's take a look at the wallpaper pack. <laughs> so I'm going to change background. Maybe they're going to impress me with some beautiful wallpapers because honestly, the uh, injury wallpaper, the lemur <laughs> on the wallpaper, that's actually not bad. You got anything else? Um, no. Wow. Your wallpaper pack only has three wallpapers in it this time. That's unusual, too, because usually Ubuntu ships with a wallpaper pack of like 12, 15 really nice wallpapers. And this time you only get three. You get, you know, this here, this night sky, which honestly isn't anything special. And then a picture of a road. That's a nice wallpaper. I like that. Yeah. So you give me three wallpapers. One of them eh, kind of boring. That one's really nice. And I like your your original art with the injury wallpaper. That, that's actually not bad too. But still, that's 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 again strange. It, it's, I think that's another sign that Ubuntu I, is that a warning sign that the wallpaper pack is not you know how it was in previous generations of Ubuntu, where you had these great wallpaper packs of 12, 15 really high quality wallpapers that the community uh, contributed to. That could be another sign. Other than that, uh, 
another release of Ubuntu. Again, they release every six months. I was kind of disappointed in this release. There's so many buggy things with it. Uh, so many snap pack bugs <laughs> as well with it. But it is an interim release. And the good thing about interim releases is they can test things. They can actually put these things out there knowing that it's not quite ready for prime time because they want to get these things tested, of course, in advance of the next LTS release, which of course is coming next April. So in uh, 2204, which is April of 2022, in six months, they're going to have an LTS release. So it's good to throw as much stuff in 2110 as possible, knowing that some of this stuff is not quite ready yet, so that some of the bugs get fleshed out a little bit in preparation for the upcoming LTS release. Now, before I go, I do want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Alan, Chuck, Commander Angry, Diokai, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Lee, Maxim, Michael, Mike, Nitrix, Arion, Alexander, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Polydet, Raver, Red Prophet, Stephen, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Ubuntu 2110 impish injury, it wouldn't be possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. These names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm just sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Gnome makes my head hurt.